A man was arrested in Searcy today on more than 70 counts of sexual assault of a minor. And Harding students are all serving those in need. Your HU16 news starts right now. Good evening and welcome to HU16 Live at 5. I'm Michaela Twig. And I'm Josh Robinson. Federal police have made a long-awaited arrest. U.S. Marshals from Little Rock arrested Jeffrey... Uh U.S. Marshals from Little Rock arrested Jeffrey Jackson, who was wanted on 76 counts of sexual assault of a minor. Authorities say Jackson was staying with a relative here in Searcy when they got wind of his whereabouts. They found him while he was driving and arrested him in Yancey Park. Jackson was set to appear in White County District Court this afternoon. Police need help finding a man that robbed an elderly woman. A white man with Texas plates was spotted at the Forest City Walmart, robbing and injuring an older woman while she was putting groceries in her car. Hours later, the same man was reported to have robbed another elderly woman outside the Blytheville Walmart. The robber is believed to be heading north on I-55 in a light-colored four-door car with rusted indented fenders. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Blytheville police. And two Arkansans were arrested for stealing a houseboat. Harley Mullins and Jessica Eddings were arrested on charges of burglary, theft of property, and breaking and entering. The two stole from boat docks and a houseboat. All property stolen was identified and returned to its rightful owners. A man accused of rape has new representation in court. William Stillman was charged with a Class Y felony in relation to a suspected rape next to the BB Walmart parking lot in October. Stillman was appointed a public defender for his first court appearance, but is now represented by defense attorney Jim Hensley. He is currently in the White County Detention Center on a $75,000 bond and is set to appear in court on April 20th. And the University of Arkansas campus police are investigating a reported rape. A U of A student reported that she had been raped about a month ago at Hots Honors Hall, a dorm primarily for first-year students in the Honors College. The student said the rapist was not affiliated with the U of A, and no, no more information has been released. A Conway man pled innocent to starting a fire that injured two people. David Hartzell was accused of arson after a fire in an apartment complex injured two of the residents. Hartzell is charged with one count of felony arson and two counts of first-degree battery. He claims he is innocent and his next pre-trial hearing is set for late May. Foreign policy is front and center today in Washington as President Trump hosted King Abdullah of Jordan at the White House. In the wake of the gas attacks in Syria and a North Korean missile launch, the president was confronted with some tough questions about how his administration will tackle the serious challenges going forward. Diane Gallagher is in Washington with the latest. I inherited a mess. The leader of the free world outlining his view of America's role on the global stage amidst a growing list of conflict and tragedy. I think the Obama administration had a great opportunity to solve this crisis a long time ago when he said the red line in the sand. It is now my responsibility. Facing reporters while hosting King Abdullah of Jordan, the president addressed this week's devastating suspected chemical attack in Syria which left dozens killed, including at least 10 children. Innocent babies, babies, little babies. That crosses many, many lines beyond the red line, many, many lines. When asked if he had a message for the Syrian regime. They will have a message. You will see what the message will be. Today's press conference comes as a majority of Americans, 58 percent, disapprove of the president's handling of foreign policy, according to a Quinnipiac University poll. Now, in addition to Syria, the White House is also tackling North Korea after the rogue country conducted its second missile test this month. A terse statement from the State Department last night read in part, the United States has spoken enough about North Korea. We have no further comment. The country of North Korea, we have a big problem. We have somebody that is not doing the right thing. North Korea will be a major topic when Trump hosts the Chinese president at Mar-a-Lago on Thursday and Friday. The two will also tackle trade, an issue that candidate Trump promised to turn in America's favor throughout the 2016 election. In Washington, I'm Diane Gallagher. 
The Arkansas state revenue prediction fell short by millions. The state general revenue last month dropped by almost $40 million compared to last year. Governor Asa Hutchinson says it's premature to make any decision about cutting budgets for the remainder of the fiscal 2017 year, which ends in June. According to State Senator Brian King, Governor Hutchinson should have been cutting budgets months ago since the decline in state income has been an issue since last July. And the cause of death for a Paragold inmate has been identified. Last month, 22-year-old Christopher Daniels was operating a four-wheeler in Linwood Cemetery and fell off. Greene County Sheriff David Carter says it is common practice for city prisoners to work cemetery detail. Daniels injured his head and was pronounced dead four days later. Arkansas State Police are trying to identify a pedestrian that was killed trying to cross Interstate 30. The male pedestrian was crossing the westbound lanes when he was hit early Tuesday morning. He was pronounced dead at the scene and the investigation is still ongoing. And a man caught damaging a restaurant says he was on bath salts. Hot Springs resident David Talbert claimed to be on bath salts when arrested for damaging an Arby's uh, restaurant on Monday night. Tabor is charged with public intoxication and first degree criminal mischief for causing thousands of dollars worth of damage. Tabor is being held at the Garland County Jail with a bail set at $3,000. Police are searching for two people accused of carjacking two women this week. Police say two women were driving a 2013 Cadillac in Little Rock when they were rear-ended. They pulled into a parking lot and that's when the suspects in a Tahoe got out with guns and told the women to get out of their car. The car was reported stolen, but just hours later, police received a call from the owner that the car had been found. No arrests have been made in this case yet. And an Arkansas man is behind bars tonight for receiving child pornography. Charles Smith was first convicted of second-degree sexual assault back in 2006. Then, Smith was arrested last September on charges of sexual abuse. He then told authorities that he had been downloading child pornography to his phone and transferring it to his computer. Smith has been sentenced to more than 17 years in prison and then supervised release for the rest of his life. A Benton teacher released a statement after being caught on camera pushing a student. The video circulated in January and Becca Bennett was suspended without pay through the end of June. Bennett's statement says the Benton School District has no policy or training on how to handle aggressive students and that she hopes the student gets the help he needs where the well-being of other students is not at risk. No criminal charges are pending. And on Lake Catherine, the Hot Springs Fishing Challenge is underway. Mark Herbert of Hot Springs caught a $1,000 bluegill less than four hours into the challenge. Lots of big fish are still left to be caught, including Big Al, which is worth $15,000 and has not been caught since the event began in 2012. The event is held on Lake Hamilton and Lake Catherine until June 30th and is open to anyone with a valid Arkansas fishing license. Coming up, Wes Henry has all the Harding Sports info you need. But Bo Smith is next with your weather. Bo? A surprisingly chilly day outside this week, and we're expected to see some more cold weather over the next couple of days. I'll have all the details on that for you more after the break. I never felt all that special. But in the wake of an earthquake, we can all do something. When donating goods, it's hard to know what's needed. So now it's my turn to help. Aid workers can spend me locally, or I can help save lives. Someone is doing better because of me. Together, we made that happen. This is why you took a second job. Why you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. Why you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making Home Affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE today. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile.
Smilerina. <laughs> Sometimes all it takes to be a dad is remembering how to be a kid again. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back to HU 16. 510 is the current time and it has been surprisingly cool outside compared to the rest of this week. We've seen some strong winds over the week, but right now it's we have gusts that are reaching over 30 miles an hour and that's bringing our temperatures down a lot for today. And we're also expecting some cool nights ahead of us for tonight and the next few nights. But we are going to see a sunny weekend this coming weekend and the temperatures are going to warm up. So it's going to be a wonderful spring weekend ahead of us. But right now here in Cersei, temperatures are at 50 54 degrees, what feels like 52 though, with winds coming out of the west at 20 miles per hour, and of course those strong gusts at, at least 30 miles per hour, sometimes even reaching up to 40 miles an hour. Humidity though is at 60% right now, and take a look at this video that was taken outside today, just uh, showing you how strong these winds are. Whenever it blows, it blows. If you have an uh, umbrella out right now, you would feel like Mary Poppins flying off into the distance for the most part. But it's bringing down those temperatures drastically right now. And you can even see that going into our almanac for today. The average high normally about 69. We're way below for today. The average low, we're also going to be below as well. And it's sitting at 44 degrees right now. For the record high, that was set in 1978 eight at 85 degrees while the record low was set in 1944 at 28 degrees. As we go into our country surface map uh, right now and seeing the forecast for the next day or so, what we're looking at is all these rain, severe thunderstorms that are going on in the southeast right now. We're expecting tornadoes, hailstorms, and really, really severe uh, floods for the most part in low-lying areas. But for the most part here in Arkansas, we're not seeing anything at all. What we will be seeing, though, is this cold front coming down over the next couple of days. Should be hitting us uh, over late Sunday night and, part, and partly into Monday. We could see a low pressure system forming up as well, bringing in some rains. And that's going to affect our temperatures uh, at the beginning of next week. And even right now, we are seeing some cold uh, temperatures throughout the country. What we see in this V-shape actually bringing down temperatures from the lower 50s to the lower 60s but we do see in the southeast right now starting at Alabama going through the middle of Tennessee and going through Kentucky temperatures ranging from the upper 70s to the lower 80s but as far as our neighbors are here in Arkansas they're also experiencing the same temperatures we're uh, experiencing here in Searcy right now Fayetteville and Monticello at 50 degrees while Little Rock is at 58 Jonesboro at 62 and Texarkana at 61 degrees for, the, for tonight's forecast we're we're going to be seeing some partly cloudy skies out here. Might even be seeing some rain as well. Only a 30% chance right now, and they're expected to go away by about 7 o'clock tonight. But we are seeing some rain passing through White County and even Searcy right now. Uh, your low is going to be 43 degrees. Winds coming out of the west-northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Should be expecting some strong gusts still at about 25 miles per hour. For tomorrow's forecast, we're going to be seeing some sun outside with a high of 65 degrees. Winds still coming out of the northwest at 10 to 15 miles miles per hour. You can still expect gusts to be hitting about 25 to 30 miles an hour for tomorrow. And we're also going to be seeing uh, some cool days like we saw today. Right now, Thursday, Friday, experiencing temperatures in the mid 60s. Those low temperatures are going to be dropping down to the low to mid 40s, almost reaching uh, the 30s for the most part for tomorrow night as well. Saturday, though, it's going to jump up to 73 degrees. Sunday, it's going to be the warmest it's going to get all week at 78 degrees with a low temperature of 61. And Monday, we're seeing it go to the mid 70s and also seeing some rain head our way, as I mentioned in the country's surface map forecast where we're seeing just a 50% chance of showers. Don't know right now if it's going to be severe or not, but we will keep you updated on that. That's all I have with your weather. Well, let's take it back to the news desk with Josh and Michaela. Up next, Todd Gentry is here to talk with us about a lot of good happening here in Searcy. We'll be right back. Cinderella found the pet that fits her perfectly. Tiana gave her pet the royal treatment. Belle found beauty where no one else did. And you can too. Share your heart. Share your love. Bring home your forever friend. Make a shelter pet part of your world. Happily Ever After begins at the shelterpetproject.org. 
They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. A full life, measured in seats, starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. And welcome back to HU16. I'm here with Todd Gentry, the campus minister here at Harding University. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some service that's going on throughout White County today. So, Todd, thank you so much for being with us today. Welcome. So, today is Bison's for Christ Day. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is and what's happening today? Well, today there are about almost 2,000 students that are participating, doing some good in the community. It may be anything from working with children to working with widows. Uh, some of it's yard work, some of it's actually feeding them in different ways. And so there's about 157 projects through what we've organized. And then outside of us, there's at least five or six other projects that include several hundred people that are also doing good in the community today. Great, great. And this is a yearly thing that happens here at Harding, right? Right. Uh, this is our really our 10th year to do Bison's for Christ in the way it exists now. Okay. Um, and so what is the theme for this year? This year's theme is continue, and that was decided on by a group of students. We have a leadership team that kind of decides the theme every year. That leadership team changes. There's about 20 students on that. And then there's another team of about 50 more students that includes a lot of different people, and they help decide the theme and the graphics and all those things. So what went into deciding the theme for this year? So there are about 20 different suggestions of what we would do. Students came up with whether it was a scripture or an idea, and those, those were presented to the group. And then the group decided exactly what this theme would be. And this year's theme on Continue was the idea of is we don't ever want this to be one event a couple hours a day, but that service happens every day all the time. Okay, and so this is all about service, helping others. How do you decide um, who to help and what to go do? Do they sign up for that? Do they just email people and say, we need this done, but we can't do it ourselves? Yeah. How are those decisions made? So typically, we have a list that we serve every year. We're, at least 80 widows are being served today. Uh, we get lists from church, from community groups. We try to decide if they physically can't do it or don't have the means to take care of what happens. And so we try to vet those the best we can that they really are for people that really need the service. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and so uh, you were saying that you don't want this to just be a one-day thing. It's continued three, the other 364 days as well. Are there ways that students can get in contact with you or different offices here on campus where they can find out different ways or different people that need to be served? Yeah, there's a group of students uh, called Christians in Action that every weekend they're doing five or six projects, and some of these are the same kind of projects. There'll be students that will follow up doing some of the things that we've done today. And then also there's always opportunities to serve, and so we're constantly getting requests in of how, you know, what there is to do, how can we help them. And so there's stuff that happens every year. One of the great examples is the pizza ministry, which started at a Bison's for Christ uh, about seven or eight years ago, and it's continued now because students said, hey, this is a real need. Yes, I see posts about that on social media every week, and they have a blast. I know they do. Um, you actually have a t-shirt with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how much How much are those? Can people still get them, and is that money going to anything specific? No, these are done at cost. It's $8. It's continue, and uh, it's about three sixty four because it's not one day of service. And so there's a few still on sale, $8 in the bookstore. Great. Okay. Um, and so is there... Uh, what are some of the projects that are going on today? And then how are students... Students are doing this for service, so are you guys 
paying them somehow or, you know, rewarding them maybe for it? There's no payment. Everything's volunteer. But tonight at 6 o'clock at the College Church, everybody's invited for a cookout that's been part of it. And usually we feed anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 people. Now, not everybody comes. In fact, some uh, homeowners will say, hey, come and eat with us or different things like that. So, but we serve a lot of them. Great. Awesome. Well, Todd, thank you so much for being with us today. That sounds great. Go out, look for those opportunities to serve because they're around you all the time. We'll be back with West Sports, Wes Henry with sports after the break. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, I, there was a, I had, just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, Smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F A S T. Fast. Good evening and welcome back to A216 Live at 5. I'm Wes Henry and here's what's happening in sports. The Great American Conference announced the league's athletes of the week, and both athletes just happen to be Harding athletes. Freshman Emily Shell was named GAC Field Athlete of the Week, and senior Josh Sorochin was named the Men's Field Athlete of the Week. Shell turned in Harding's lone top five finish in the field event at the Jury Hotel's Joey Haynes Invitationals. She placed fifth in the javelin throw and also threw her personal best at 115 feet. It was ranked the third longest throw in the GAC. She also competed in the 100 and 400 meter hurdles and the long jump. Sorochin has met the NCAA Division II automatic qualifying standard in a discus with a mark of almost 60 meters. It was ranked fifth best by any collegiate athlete from the weekend. He also posted the second longest hammer throw in the GAC and fifth best javelin effort in the sports. The Harding softball team has risen to the top of the NCAA Division II power rankings. The powerhouse Lady Bisons are on a 27-winning streak led in part by the dominant arm of Autumn Humes, who is post, posting an impressive 17-1 record with a 1.66 earned run average and 161 strikeouts. The Lady Bison's win streak is a new Great American Conference record, their previous record held by Arkansas Tech last season, who won 19 straight games last season. Taking a look ahead into the week, the Harding baseball team looks to bounce back out of its slump as they face East Central right here in Searcy at Jerry Moore Field. First pitch is scheduled for 3 p.m. And the Harding softball team looks to extend its record-setting winning streak as they travel to Ada, Oklahoma to take on East Central University in a doubleheader on Friday. Game 1 starts at 2 p.m. and Game 2 follows directly at 4 p.m. And that's all. And remember, you can always stay up to date with all your favorite Harding sports teams at Harding.com. Now let's toss it back to the desk with Josh and Michaela. After the break, Harding students here in Searcy aren't the only ones helping those in need. 
see how the international students gave back to those around them. We'll be right back. This new dad is picturing a tree house in the sky, but, but he's, he's ignoring, ignoring the instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I hope mom knows what to do. Oh. Oh. See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Whoa, dude. You thinking what I'm thinking? Yo, I'm gonna cut the gap. Integrity. Pass it on. Save the day. <laughs> a message from the Foundation for a Better Life. We were drawn here from all 50 states and more than 50 different nations. We are 7,000 students of languages, arts, sciences, and life. As diverse as our origins and as different as our backgrounds are, it's remarkable how much we have in common here in this place of faith, learning, and living. Harding University. Students here on campus haven't been the only ones getting involved with the local community. Last month, students studying abroad with Harding's international programs spent time working with our neighbors overseas. Now this is my first year here at Harding, but Josh, have you ever been involved with Bisons for Christ? I have. Freshman year, I think I went and I raked leaves uh, for an elderly woman, me and a bunch of guys I was in the social club with. We all got together and raked leaves and it was, it was really cool, um, but I just have not found the time or had the time ever since to be a part of it again, but it was, it was a really great experience. Now speaking of that, it's been very windy today and I'm it sure is. raking leaves would have been a hassle if they were doing that today. Yes, I'm sure it is. Uh, Bo, are we going to continue to see these kinds of winds? Well, Josh, this windy weather today has been a problem for people raking leaves with winds reaching up to 30 miles per hour. As you take a look for tonight, what we're looking at right now is a very low and very cool temperature. As we take a look at our screen right here, it's showing that for tomorrow, uh, well, tonight, we're expecting 43 degrees as our low. But for tomorrow, it's going to be a little bit better uh, at 65 and sunny outside. Winds are still going to be powerful at reaching uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour coming from the northwest. As we go into our five-day forecast, what we are looking at is a bit of the same thing uh, for the most part where we're going to be seeing some sunny skies and also some cool temperatures reaching into the mid-60s, low temperatures going into the low 40s. This weekend, though, going to be really nice spring weather. Back to you guys. Thank you for joining us for HU16's Live at 5, where community matters. Stay tuned for a replay of this morning's chapel. And remember, you can always tune into the link, uh, uh, HU16 on the link. It's streaming.harding.edu. And follow us on social media. Have a great day.